Hey everybody, Diana Genta here, your Wasteland Rover. So I have finally finished a what I thought was going to be a few days, turned out to be a few weeks long project, making a pit boy from cardboard and paper mache. It's been really hard finding cardboard in the wasteland. Took it down into my shelter. Got some stuff worked out for you that I'm going to share with you. There are a few things that need to be said before we get into it. Please be patient. I'm going to get through it as quick as I can. I have a list of supplies you're going to need down in the description. It looks like a lot. It looks like a lot, but it's mostly just different kinds of glue um, and things like that. I'm going to suggest you get as many different thicknesses of cardboard as you can. But honestly, Serial cardboard and just regular single layer corrugated cardboard will get you through it. Okay. I'm going to describe to you what you want to do, not exactly what I did. I learned some things as I was making it, so I'm building that into my description here for you. Some steps I've also moved time wise for clarity. So if you see something in the background of the video that hasn't been made or talked about yet, fret not, I will get to it. Just worry about how the video relates to the thing that I'm talking about. I haven't seen another pit boy made from paper mache. I didn't search exhaustively, but it looked pretty well. I only saw one or two pit boys out of any handmade medium that turned out as well as this. So while the process is involved, it does look pretty good at the end. And since you'll have the benefit of learning from my mistakes, I think yours is going to look even better. Let's get into it. We're going to start with making what I'm going to call the arm assembly, that tube that everything else is going to attach to. So we're going to start by measuring the length that you want the pit boy to be on your arm. Now, measure around your wrist and a measure around your arm closer to your elbow at that length. Now you're gonna take the measurement of your wrist, right, your wrist circumference. You're gonna figure out the diameter of that. Now you can use math or you can use the internet. I went with the internet. So figure the diameter of your wrist at an inch for the padding that we're going to put into it. Use that new diameter to figure a new wrist with padding circumference. That's going to be the actual arm assembly size. You're going to cut two bands using half of that new wrist circumference. So they're going to wrap around and make the whole thing, right? That half circumference long and four inches tall. Now I want to mention in the video here, you can see that corrugated cardboard has sort of a grain. It has the lines of corrugation, right? Along those lines, the cardboard does not bend very easily. That's your line of strength. Across, it bends really easily. It's best to cut your bands across that grain like I'm doing here because we're going to curve it into a circle and that's just going to make it easier to curve smoothly. And you're going to repeat all that for your elbow circumference. Figure the diameter, add an inch for padding, figure the new circumference of the actual arm assembly, make two bands half of that circumference by four inches or so. These don't have to be precisely four inches, but you want enough that these are going to overlap somewhat on your arm. Now we also need to make a band for the middle of your arm. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the length of one of your wristbands. You cut two wristbands, right? You're going to take one of those, subtract that width from one of the elbow ones, divide that by two, add that length back onto the wrist. Make two middle bands that long, and four inches also wide. You'll see here me laying all these bands out together just to make sure that I've made them thick enough, right? The circumferences I know are good, but I want to make sure that they're going to actually stretch the whole, in my case, seven inches of the pit boy with some overlap. You know, half three quarters inch of overlap should be fine. So looking at the image of a pit boy, you're going to see it's not as flat as that, right? It's got uh, a bit of a riser between the middle and the wristbands and sort of a taper from the elbow to the middle. You also notice that the middle band is a little bit wider than the wrist and elbow bands are. So now we're going to make these 3D. So first we're going to make the riser between the middle and the wrist bands. So we're going to take that middle measurement that we used to make a band, multiply it by two, that's the circumference of the middle uh, part of the armature. Draw a half circle as wide as that diameter, and then you're going to make a half circle within that that is the diameter of your wrist. The wrist, the armature, the uh, wrist plus padding, the one we've still been using. Now you're going to do the same kind of process with your wrist diameter and your elbow diameter, cutting out about a third of an inch thickness of these half circles, and we're going to use these on the ends of your pit boy to sort of finish it off a little bit. So we now have three narrow 
half circle arches. We're gonna make two of each size, one of the six all together. And we're gonna glue each of those, hot glue each of those in place. We're gonna hot glue one to each of the middle bands, one to each of the wristbands, and one to each of the elbow bands. We're gonna paper mache just the outside of each of these sections. You should have three sections now. Two wrist sections with the lip, two middle sections with the riser, which is very much like a lip, and two elbow pieces with the lip. We're gonna paper mache these now because we're gonna to wanna to tie them to, uh, to molds to let them keep their circular shape while they dry. And I'm gonna, I got really crazy and paper mache pretty much all of each of one before I tied it down and it ended up warping anyway later. So I'm gonna suggest that you go kind of conservative on how much of each of these you paper mache at one time. That might keep them um, a bit more circular in the long run. And if you wanted to, you might be able to, to fashion some braces, kind of like these lips along the inside to help hold it in place more. You don't want to paper mache all the way to the end opposite the lip. We're gonna be doing some more manipulation of that, but it's really hard to tie it into a mold once you've done that. So strap it to a mold that is the same diameter as the inside of your pieces. Now it's gonna be hard. I basically went around my house looking at jars and, you know, flour containers and peanut butter jars and anything of the right circular shape. I guess if you really had to, you could maybe go to a hardware store and get some PVC pipe or something that would fit them. Um, but it's kind of tricky. Just do your best. You might have to pad something out with some uh, newspaper with some plastic wrap on the outside, something like that to keep it, the paper mache from sticking to it. You're just gonna have to get creative here and see what's, you know, available to you. And then strap those down to the molds with uh, thick rubber tie, fabric strips, whatever's gonna hold it on really securely. Don't do it enough to, you know, bend the cardboard or the paper mache, but do pull it as firmly as you can without bending it. Once all those are dry, now we're gonna make the tapered end of the elbow pieces. You're gonna look at a picture of a Pip-Boy and figure out how wide that taper is. I decided that it was about that wide an inch or so, and I drew a straight line across that edge. Then I cut little notches, not just lines, but little notches into that edge down to the line. So they're little V-shaped cuts, about every half an inch. Now, you'll see that I cut the corners off maybe. Don't, don't do that, that was a bad idea. I had to glue those back on. And this took some fiddling. Um, make them maybe a little bit wider than you think you need. You can always like, cut off more as you go. So I bent all these in and I taped them together so that they fit the middle band, right? I used a little bit of hot glue also to fill in the gaps and kind of keep it from unbending. And you'll, and you'll see that I didn't get this exactly perfectly, you know, hopefully you can do better. And I would avoid overlapping any of these tabs. Just cut it wider if you have to. There's probably a better way to do this, but I don't know, I couldn't think of one. Now we're gonna attach all these pieces together we're gonna end up with two halves of our arm assembly. So we're gonna overlap these bands, all the bands of a wrist, a middle, and an elbow within each other for the proper length of your pit boy. And you can go ahead and draw any lines that you need on with a pencil right now. You're gonna hot glue the inside of that riser circle on the middle band to the wristband at that line. You're gonna hold them parallel to each other, nice and crisp, until the glue cools enough that it's not gonna move. You do the same thing with the taper of the elbow and the line on the middle band. And then you repeat that with the pieces of the other side of the arm. Now you're gonna to wanna to hold both sides of the arm together to check for any deformities or size problems. You can trim the edges on the inside of the overlaps. You can hot glue extra width of cardboard under the edges to make them fit. Um, you can also dampen these a little bit and reshape them if you can figure out a way to do it once they're glued. Now it is time to attach our hinge. The hinge is gonna go in the middle section and you're gonna to wanna to again, refer to a picture to see exactly where you think that goes. I tucked mine into the overlap space between the middle and the wrist section because that's just how it worked out best. You don't have to, but that's what I did. Now you might need to cut some small notches into the, into the bands to make them slightly narrower where the hinge goes just to make them fit if you need to, that's totally fine. Hold the, I actually taped the hinge in place 
and just to make sure that everything was fitting together the way I wanted it to be. And then you just hot glue that baby in place. Hold it till it's cool. Now, this can detach if you're rough with the pit boy I kind of was trying to squish it back into the round shape that it kind of dried out of because I was a little too enthusiastic with the paper mache and as, as I tried to kind of squish things back into place it did pop off and so what I did I just super glued it back into the place just matching where the hot glue kind of made a mold for the hinge and then I overlapped some hot glue over the edge of the hinge from the from the cardboard for some reinforcement and I had zero problem with it after that. So if you're just just relatively normally careful with it, the hot glue should be enough. But this is the super glue trick for if, if it's not. So now we're going to make the padding for the inside of the arm assembly. We're going to make a starting template. You're going to draw a trapezoid that's the height of the inside of your arm assembly. The base is the same measurement you used to make each elbow band and the top is the wrist measurement for each band. So these again are going to be like cylinders that go inside. So cut that out, trace it onto another piece of cardboard. And I used cereal box type cardboard here. It's a good, it's thin enough that it's not going to affect any measurements that I would make. It's not going to take up too much space on its own. It's sturdy enough to hold the padding as well as we're going to need it to. And it's also nice and thin and easy to trace with. So we made the one trapezoid, we're going to trace it onto another piece of cereal box cardboard and cut that out. We're going to tape those into a circle. Um, it doesn't hurt to actually try it inside the arm assembly to make sure that it fits reasonably well. Um, it should be relatively, we're going to glue, end up gluing this to the arm assembly. So you want to make sure that it fits well enough that that's going to be possible. Now, when it's taped into a circle, you're going to notice that at the joints, like where the edges join, at the elbow end, it's going to point out. And at the wrist end, it's going to point in because we didn't cut these in curves, we cut them straight. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna trim off those pointy joints at the elbow, and we're gonna trace these again onto more cereal cardboard using this new curve. You can sort of smooth the curve out as you, as you draw it. And then when you draw the wrist edge, you're going to, you're gonna extend those sides up the same amount that you cut off from the bottom when you're making that curve. And then draw that, draw that curve in for the wrist. That way you're not losing any actual length and you're making a nice curve that will make a good cylinder. Now before you cut these out, you're gonna actually cut them out with a quarter to half inch border around the sides. You're gonna trace this twice onto half inch thick foam. And then you're gonna hot glue it onto your cardboard. We're leaving extra because it's, I discovered on the last piece, it's a lot easier to cut this foam the way we're gonna be cutting it next with a cardboard back than just by itself. So you're gonna to wanna to draw lines on the sides to bevel this foam so that it actually fits as a, as a nice cylinder instead of sort of squishing in at the where it joins on the sides. So you're going to look on the cardboard side of the padding and you're going to see the line you originally traced, the trapezoid you originally traced that you cut that extra around. You're going to see where that meets the foam and you're going to draw a 45 degree angle towards the middle, towards the inside face of the foam, a side that's not glued to the cardboard. You're going to do that at the elbow corners and at the wrist corners. Then you're going to draw a straight line from wrist to elbow on one side and wrist to elbow on the other side. So we've got a smaller trapezoid on the inside than we do on the outside. Now we're going to bevel cut this with a pair of scissors. We're going to put, you're going to put one blade of the scissors on the cardboard at that line you originally drew, and you're going to put the other blade of the scissors on the new line that you drew. And you're going to cut that 45 degree angle out of the foam and the cardboard. It's a lot easier to cut the foam when it's attached, when you've got the cardboard backing on it to sort of hold it in place. Otherwise, you're going to get a way crazy line. Just cut it as straight as you can. It's going to be good enough. Now that you've got these basic pads cut out, you're going to want to test them again inside the arm assembly to make sure that it closes without a whole lot of pressure because that's going to put pressure on the hinge and on the latch and probably be uncomfortable on your arm. You want to make sure that it fits inside the lips at the wrist and elbow edges of your arm. You want to make sure there aren't any concerning gaps or any other issues that, that look like a problem to you. Now we're going to want to cover these pads. I used a stretchy fake leather. I suppose you could probably use a um, like a nice supple real leather or even a, a thin, pr pretty soft 
uh, any kind of artificial leather. You could try those. I don't know. I used the stretch stuff, which was a little bit more forgiving. In my head, I knew exactly how I was going to fold this so that the sides would go in, the wrist and elbow ends would go up over that so those folds wouldn't show, and I would pre-cut all that excess in the corners and it would fold up really nice and tidy and I never managed to do it. I think I managed it once and couldn't figure out even though I'd done it what I did. So you can see here I had kind of given up um, and it's sloppy but at the end it still looks just fine so I would say don't stress this too much. As long as your wrist and elbow ends are the last thing that fold up you're probably good. And you can see I just hot glued this together. The benefit of hot glue is that it's not going to stick this so well that you can't pull it apart if you mess something up. It won't be pretty, but it'll work. So when the pads are done, you're gonna want to test the fit again in the arm assembly. Uh, go ahead and tape them in. Make sure that the long edges meet well still once it's now that it's covered. Make sure that the wrist and elbow edges look neat enough and go ahead and redo anything you have to do right now. This is what your arm is going to go through. So make sure that it is at least somewhat comfortable. And if it's good, just hot glue them in and hold it till it cools. At this point, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to stay in well enough to be able to fit other pieces on properly. This will be pulled out later and reattached, so don't get too prissy about it. If you want to, you can trim the extra cardboard where the pieces of the arm assembly overlap first. Leave some overlap, but if there's too much, um, you can trim that off. You might find that it makes a little extra area for the pads to stick, and that's fine too. If you have about a half or a quarter inch, that's pretty safe. You can do that with an X-Acto knife and then hot glue those pads in. So next what we're gonna make is what I'm gonna call the main housing. The screen and the sides of the screen, all that kind of stuff. Everything that goes on your arm assembly. And we're gonna start by building that up in some layers. Now, I made a printout of the entire face plate, and I used that to make a template for the layers. I'm going to uh, somehow attach that in the description. Um, maybe I'll just put a picture of it right here that you can screenshot if that gives you a clear enough picture. So the way I would recommend doing this is cut the entire face plate out, print it out, cut the entire face plate out, Cut off anything that's just arm, you know, that's not that whole section, right? And then rubber cement that to some serial cardboard, again, to be easy to trace. I didn't, and there are some narrow layers at the end that were a pain in my ass, so, because they are floppy. So, learn from my fail and put it on serial cardboard, or even just cardstock something. So you're going to trace that template, and we're going to call this layer one. You're going to trace that template onto some good quality corrugated cardboard. Nothing super thick, not like double thickness or anything, but at least a, you know, Amazon box quality. Trace the edges of that and then carefully cut that out with an X-Acto knife. Do two of these for some extra thickness that you can experiment with and see if you actually want it. You might not end up wanting it, but you might end up wanting it and you're going to need a really sturdy base for all this. Now look at this picture of the screen and it's, you know, housing and everything you'll see that there are different thicknesses, like some layers rise up higher than others. So we're gonna start cutting those out and tracing them. You're gonna to wanna to figure out for yourself where each layer will be in the natural sections you can see there in your template. For me, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between layer two and layer one, um, but I'll show you layer two cut out here just so you can see the difference, right? Now trace that onto your corrugated cardboard, cut out what is not in the next layer, layer three. This should probably mostly be the screen proper itself and its frame. So if you see different extra sections in there, fine, go for it. Do what looks right in your heart to do. But for me, for my eyes, the next layer up was mostly just the screen and its frame. Now you also want to cut the screen area out and save that. Layer four, I cut out the very edge around the screen and I made two of those. Okay. You might need more, so don't lose that template, but you're going to need at least two. Layer five, I cut out just the same as layer four, but with a slightly smaller screen area. Give yourself like a quarter of an inch, just enough that tape will hold your screen in, but your ultimate screen size is still going to look right. Now, once you've got all those layers cut out, you want to stack them all together as evenly as possible, except for a layer five and a layer four. You want to make sure they're matched up as pretty well as you can. Look for any problems or sections you might have missed. Make sure it looks right to you. If you cut it out super well with your X-Acto knife, if you're really exacting about it, 
You shouldn't have too much trimming to do, but once you've got it all glued together, you can trim it and make sure that those edges are as straight as you can reasonably make them. Oh yeah, and rubber cement those together. Now, the light strip that you got is probably going to be way longer than you actually need. So I would cut an inch off of that and stick it inside your screen cavity, I guess, um, right up against the wall of it, like vertically, and to make sure those lights aren't going to clear your screen cavity. If it's too shallow, just take an extra layer four, put it on top and test it again. That's why we've got extras. If you have to trace more, go for it. And personally, I would take all the, uh, all the template pieces and put them in a Ziploc bag or something. If you throw them away, you are definitely going to need them later. Now comes the time to install the light that's going to go behind our screen. I would strongly suggest also trimming the walls inside the screen cavity with an X-Acto knife to be as even as you can reasonably make them. This is what the LED strip is going to stick to, and so the more even it is, the more surface it's going to have to stick to. Now you take that screen part that you removed from layer three or layer four and trace it onto a piece of aluminum foil. Smooth that foil out as much as you can if needed, and then super glue that into the very bottom of the screen cavity, smoothing it down again and making sure none is on the walls. Now it's thinking time again. This whole screen assembly that you made is gonna be raised above your arm assembly by sort of a wall that goes around it. So it's kind of gonna be a little box in there and you're gonna to wanna to think about where you can tuck the battery pack inside there, inside this whole main housing, while still having the switch and the battery door to change batteries accessible. The only place I could think of on mine was under the latch in the front, but yours might end up differently, so do as you like. You do wanna plan here. I had to change my mind like three or four times and it was, a, it was a pain in the neck, so have as much of a plan as you can right now. As the video goes on, you'll probably see where I tried some other things, but you know, this is what worked for me. You're gonna to wanna to carefully punch a hole in the bottom corner of the screen cavity, um, handy to where you want the battery pack to be, and you're gonna feed the light strip up through this. I would test the lights to make sure they work before you seal them up in here. So feed the lights up through the hole, and starting at the end nearest the battery, you're gonna peel off a couple or three inches at a time of adhesive backing on that light strip and stick it along the walls of the cavity, working your way around. When you get back to the, the battery wire, just cut off the extra. It doesn't matter for these. The battery is gonna hang by a longish wire and that's totally fine. If you want to, you can tape it up out of the way for now. Eventually you're gonna tuck it away with the battery. Now we're gonna make the screen itself and we're gonna prep the frame for it first. Carefully, if you wanna cover this whole Pip-Boy and paper mache and you don't have to, you can leave it looking as cardboard and that's a cool look too. But if you're gonna paper mache this eventually, you're gonna to wanna to paper mache right now around the very inside of layer five. To get good narrow curves, you're gonna to wanna to use really narrow strips. It's gonna be a pain in the neck, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. So set that aside to let it dry. Now using that layer four template you had, cut another piece, another layer four, but make the screen area smaller, but like half as much difference as you did for layer five. This is gonna give you a little more space for taping in the screen when it's sandwiched between layers four and five. It also make the lights a little bit less harsh and direct. It's gonna have a little bit of a lip between where you're looking and the lights themselves. If that makes sense? We'll call that layer four B. Take some rubbing alcohol and clean that transparency super well that has your screen image printed on it. It's gonna be very hard to clean it once you have it all sandwiched and stuff, so I highly recommend doing that now. Center a piece four, like your original layer four, around the screen image on the transparency. This is the one I used, you do what you want. I will also attach um, a link to that if you wanna use it. I would suggest taping it down just around the very outside edges to keep it in place, and then trace around the inner screen hole, just right around the edge of the inner screen hole with an X-Acto knife cutting out the screen. Next, center that screen on top of that 4B piece you just made and tape it in place. If the tape hangs off the edge, no big deal. Just You'll just trim it off with scissors when you're done. So this is gonna stay attached here to uh, this piece 4B. Now once layer five is dry, you center that on top and hot glue your layers 4B and five together, securely sandwiching that screen between them. Now, be careful when you pull the glue gun away, you only move away from like towards the edge and not towards the center because hot glue strings will land on your screen and mess it up. I had two, I messed both of them up. <laughs> it's pretty easy to start over with another one, but I only had two, so I just sort of scraped off what I could and I called it wasteland damage. Having some room for error is exactly why I had more than one image on my transparency. 
Now take your screen sandwich, put it on the housing on top of layer four. Your housing, it's layer one, two, three, four, right, right? Put it on top of your layer four over the, uh, the screen cavity with your lights and test the fit, the size, see if it needs trimming or anything like that to be nice and smooth around the edges. Make sure you like it. Make sure that the lights are still vertical and not squished. If they are, add more layer fours, but you probably should at this point. Wipe that wet alcohol off immediately with a new wipe, so make it as streak-free as you can. Especially that backside, you won't be able to clean that once it's glued in. And rubber cement that screen in place. For the shade around the screen, I cut a strip of cardboard, uh, I believe cereal cardboard, with that raised, not a notch, what's the opposite of a notch? In the middle, cut the length way longer than I thought I would need. Fit it onto the screen, cut those tapered edges where I wanted them to be, and hot glued it down. And I would personally take the battery pack and tape it onto the outside of that somewhere where it'll be off the bottom of it with minimal flopping around. Uh, someplace you can easily move it and the wires around in the remaining steps until you secure it in its actual resting place. Our next step is going to be attaching the screen face to our arm assembly. This is a little fiddly. You're going to want to look at images of a Pip-Boy showing the angle of the connection between the housing and the arm. You're going to want to check from all angles, make sure it's, uh, its angle of tilt towards the arm is appropriate, that it's the right distance forward or back. The spin of the face, you want that horizontal right along your arm, or it's going to cause problems later, as I discovered. When you figure out exactly where it should be so that the latch tongue is going to stick out and be able to horizontally straight out, you're going to be able to bend to land in the middle arm section where the latch should go. That's where you want it to be. You can tape on a strip of cardboard where that tongue is gonna go if it helps you line stuff up right. For this next bit, you might need an extra pair of hands. It's really important to hold this screen angle in place while you mark where the screen face and the arm meet, the wrist end and the elbow end. Move it out of the way. Lay some hot glue at the internal ridges, like where the bands meet along the axis of, mar of the lines, right? So go from the wrist mark you made all the way down the pit boy to the elbow end and then quickly put that screen face right back in place rematching those lines up now you're going to carefully hold that housing at the proper rotation angle on the arm until the glue is cool if you don't get it right you can probably take it apart <laughs> um you might need to slice it off with an exacto knife um it'd be kind of tricky but i would recommend just doing your best to begin with you can also consider adding triangular braces connecting the screen face to the arm as long as they you know stay hidden under the screen face now going back a minute to where we cut out the sections of the screen face for the different layers we cut out the section that i called a tongue where the latch attaches to it and we didn't use that yet we're gonna use it now let's trace that onto corrugated cardboard you want to go along the grain of the cardboard and you want to make the bottom extra long. You really can't make it too long because you're going to cut it off. I mean, you know, two feet might be too long. Now, obviously part of that tongue is going to attach directly to the screen face that we made, the part that we just glued onto the arm. Some of it's going to extend out. The part that's going to actually attach to the housing, I would cut a second or maybe even a third part and glue that on for a little extra thickness and better access to the battery changing and the switch and stuff if you need to. Also, I think it just looks a little bit better. That's just me. Now, depending on how your screen and your arm assembly came out, you might have to cheat on the width of the tongue, especially depending on how the battery fits under there. You might need to make it a little wider than you know, is exactly screen accurate. You wanna you wanna play around and see what works best before you start gluing stuff down. Uh, try thickening the top of the tongue more, do it less, experiment with the angle of the battery. You see if you can tuck it in back under your housing a little bit and still reach it. Just, you can tape stuff down if you need to see how things actually work. You also might need to cheat and have the tongue not come straight out of the housing because it's got to match up with that middle section where your latch is gonna go. If you didn't get the housing just so on the arm assembly, you also might have to cheat and have the tongue not come straight out of the housing at like that nice 90 degree angle. You might have to angle it. This is why we're only doing the tongue now. So you can make sure that it actually fits what you actually did. You can see that mine is crooked and it looks okay. I mean, it look great, but it's okay. It functions, which is the most important thing. Now it's time to trim the extra tongue to match the edge of the arm half. You wanna make sure the battery still fits and make any adjustments now. 
I would suggest drawing a line underneath the tongue where your battery needs to fit once you move that tongue piece away. So tape the battery pack within those lines. Make sure it fits, that you can tuck the wires away, that the switch is accessible, that you're going to be able to open the battery pack to change the batteries. Make sure it won't move around when the pit boys finish and you're actually wearing it. This is important to get right. If you're not absolutely certain that you've put the battery pack exactly where you decided it needs to go, just trace it. Trace a line and then when you glue it in, you'll know exactly where to put it. Battery side down, cover up is probably going to be the easiest way to attach that and still be able to access your batteries to change them later. Glue that battery pack in and I would glue or tuck the wires back out of sight. I also colored mine black with a Sharpie so they weren't as visible. Now you can cement the tongue in place on the housing. Now we're gonna make the wall around the, the main housing here that joins the screen face to the arm assembly. And just, you know, look at it. Look at pictures of a pit boy from the side and the back if you want, if that will help you. But just imagine where if you're gonna draw, make a wall from the screen edge, I mean, from the screen housing edge straight down to the arm assembly about where those walls would go. And then just cut sections of serial cardboard to fit those planes. Wherever you have like a, a change in angle on the screen housing, um, I would just start a new piece of cardboard. You can kind of see in the video how I did that, I hope. Um, it's going to be fiddly, it's going to take some eyeballing, it's going to be different probably on yours and to your sensibilities than mine. And that's fine, just be patient with yourself. This is a case of trust the process and it will work. You have to do some fitting, some retrimming, some holding up pieces and trying to figure out where you want to cut those lines or draw lines to cut. Whatever you got to do is, is totally fine. I would also suggest hot gluing each piece in before you glue the next one in. Glue each one to the housing, to the arm, and to the previous piece. I would suggest using a minimum of glue necessary. You want to make it sturdy. Don't use so little glue that it's, that it's floppy. This is gonna this is gonna need some structure. But you don't want to use so much glue that you get a lot of blobs in between pieces. Because once you get the whole housing done, we're gonna be paper mache over it. Paper mache A doesn't stick very well to glue, and B, if you have a bunch of blobs sticking up, it's gonna make it look weird when you get paper mache over it. So as you're gluing pieces in place, either smooth down any glue ridges while they're still fresh with a wet finger, and unless you're using like a high temp hot glue gun, which I would not recommend anyway, just a regular low temp hot glue gun, you should be able to just get your finger wet and smooth it down, and it won't hurt, it won't stick. You can also smooth it down once it's cool, with um with the hot tip of the glue gun that hot nozzle you can just sort of rub it rub the outside of it on the hot glue and smooth things down somewhat also if you have any tiny gaps that's cool just cover them with tape and another tip along where the housing sides these walls approach the hinge you might not be able to be game accurate and still open the pit boy enough at least i couldn't the housing wall kind of extends over the hinge to join up with that um, join up with that plug on the back, and I I couldn't figure out how to make it open well and still have that there. I mean, I guess if I was going to be smart and attach the the hinge to the housing wall instead of to the arm assembly, that would probably have worked. But eh, that's not what I did. This foresight might allow you to do something better with yours. So what I did was I ended the housing wall about half an inch shy of the hinge and then I turned it down at a 90 degree angle to meet the arm that way and I put a little hot glue inside to hold that 90 degree angle really well and I just glued it down there. You can see on my model what I did. I also added an extra piece of corrugated cardboard along the ridge that starts at the top of the screen and down the side just because I didn't think it stuck out enough. The next thing I would suggest making is the connector sort of wire reel on the back of the pit boy that sort of p-shaped piece that sticks out that would be um where the wire from your plug that's where that extra wire would be taken up if it were a real pit boy i would just draw out that p-shaped reel cover i would make that arm long enough to put that piece where i want it to be and then extend that arm over to fold down over the riser of the middle section and then just hot glue that into place. I would use like double layer cardboard for this if you have it. And if not, just a couple or three layers of regular cardboard, just however thick you think that that ought to be. And you probably really only need one or two thicknesses to bend over the corner of the riser. Honestly, I probably could have stood to make mine thicker. You also want to attach the dial arm that sticks up by the hinge. I was going to call it the dial arm. It comes off the housing wall facing towards your wrist edge of the pit boy, kind of kind of sticking out over that corner. It's kind of a weird shape. Um, it's like a, it's like a circle that intersects with the 
housing wall and extends out a bit. You can look at the picture that I'm including here. You can look at a regular Pip-Boy picture and see how these work. I would cut three of this shape and I would actually, I think I actually used serial cardboard. It looks like I used serial cardboard here. I also had some pretty thin corrugated cardboard that I might have used. Just do whatever thickness you have and looks appropriate to you when you look at the picture of a Pip-Boy. So I've got, I cut three pieces. I've got one here and I've got two here that I connected with some tape underneath this paper mache. Put some tape here. Put some tape across here too, I think. There's a little bit of support for that paper mache. And this is why you want all your pieces together before you start, ideally, because the space between the pieces, I made to fit this. So you're going to want to make sure you do that. And then just hot glue those bits down. You probably will actually want to hot glue it down before you tape those two pieces together. This part I didn't do until the pit boy was finished, but I was unsatisfied without having done it. But you want to do this, ideally, before we paper mache everything. And now it is time to paper mache all the things. Let me except for the screen, the battery, and the hinge. Paper mache everything else. Just to give it a nice smooth, this is all one piece thing. I mean, unless you don't want to paper mache it. You can leave it cardboard if you want. That's totally your artistic choice. But if you want to paper mache it, now's the time. If you have a small brush, that can really help you push the paper right into corners that your fingers don't really fit. And again, just a reminder, you don't have to paper mache everything all at once. You can do some, let it dry, do some more, let it dry. And that's probably a really good way of doing that. Just so so the, if it starts to feel like it's damp, or like the pieces aren't sticking, or if you have too many layers or something, just take a break, let it dry, come back to it. Now, one nice thing about paper mache is you can paint it. So if you want the color more accurate, you can do that pretty easily. And now would be a really good time to do that. You can also sand paper mache. So if you don't like the lumps and bumps on it, you can sand it either before painting it or just to have it smooth and not paint it at all. Finally, one last paper mache pro tip for you. Mod Podge makes a dishwasher safe version, which is a whole lot more water resistant than regular Mod Podge. So if you're concerned about protecting the surface of your Pip-Boy, do a coating or two of that dishwasher safe Mod Podge is gonna be a lot safer. I don't plan on wearing this anywhere it's gonna get wet, so I didn't do that. Now that everything is paper mache and nice and dry, we can attach the latch. First, you wanna super glue the small non-moving part of the latch to the bottom of the tongue. And I found super glue worked pretty well. Now, when you attach the larger moving part of the latch, you wanna make sure it's going to attach to your small hook part appropriately. So I would hook it into that small part and then just lay it down against the other side of your arm assembly. If it lays down nice and flat, awesome. Trace it and super glue it there. And if it doesn't, you can add some pieces of cardboard to get the proper, you know, height and angle that you need. So now it's time for our finishing touches. The trickiest part to explain anyway is what I'm calling this connector plug. I'm going to tell you what I did, which may or may not be helpful to you. This is going to take creativity and fiddling and looking around and some amount of luck. You could probably make these parts out of cardboard if you really wanted to. And if you were good at making round shapes out of cardboard, you could paper mache them if you want. I didn't go that route because I got lucky and found some stuff that worked. You could use, if you were gonna make it, you could use uh, toilet paper or paper towel tubes that are already round so that you don't get the, the sort of crinkly round shape that you get from bending corrugated cardboard. You could maybe use pipe insulation. I've used that on my previous Pip-Boy. It's like a little pool noodle that goes around pipes in your house. Um, just cut those down to size. And that you might even be able to plug and unplug. You can also just look around places for things the right size and shape. Your priority is for shape and that's lightweight. I would highly suggest you avoid glass, but you can paint anything the right color with nail polish or spray paint. I would look at dollar stores, beauty supply places, hardware stores. A pharmacy might give or sell you empty medicine bottles. And make sure when you go looking around that you bring your pit boy with you for size comparison. I'm gonna briefly tell you what I did for mine in case that's helpful to you. Yours might be entirely different. The white, the white cylinder is one of my husband's pill bottles and I poked a hole on the end with a nail that I heated up on the stove. I'm not suggesting you do that. The little white pointy piece, I cut off a mechanical pencil, painted it white with nail polish. The wire is a, is a phone charging cord that stopped working. So I saved it for craft purposes. I tied a knot in one end, fed it up through the white cylinder and the little pointy piece. And then I glued the black cap on and then I glued the brown cap onto the black cap. I couldn't find out good glue for these plastic things. You guys might know more than I do. I just shoved a lot of hot glue in there so that it kind of overlapped physically and wasn't just sticky to hold them together. And it seems pretty sturdy now. And then I poked a hole in the wire reel uptake thing, poked a hole in there, stuck my wire in. I didn't glue it because I don't feel like it's, it seems pretty sturdy and I haven't glued it. I may at some point if I turn out to be wrong in that. And then I colored a little black circle around it because it seemed like it looked better to me that way. 
And yeah, the black cap and the brown piece, I painted with nail polish. Again, your mileage will most likely vary. Then I hot glued all those bits onto the Pip-Boy, where after careful consideration, it looked to me like they belonged. And then we're just down to doing the final bits and bobs. Little bolts here were tiny screws so that I just bought at the hardware store. I stuck them in a piece of cardboard, painted the tops of nail polish. Right here, you could do the same with nails, tiny nails. I got tired of painting little things, so I just used dabs of nail polish. I'm not totally happy with it, but you know, it's, it's good enough for my patience level at this point. I drilled little holes for these knobs that screw into stuff, and I screwed them in. I think I also glued them too, just to be secure. This is a bottle cap that I glued on. These were also little things that I found at the hardware store. That's a knob. Those are um, like little grommets. I put two of those in there. The labels I printed out of the same image that I printed to cut up for the layers pattern, but I just did it full color. Cut this out, stuck them on with paper mache glue, and brushed a little more over the top to, uh, to seal it in better. These vent lines in the Pip-Boy, I did actually cut in with an X-Acto knife after drawing them with pencil to make sure they were gonna be straight. I, I, I painted this on with nail polish, but I don't like it. I don't like how it came out one bit. Now I looked and looked and looked for some flat red lights, anything that looked like a light. It wasn't gonna light up, but I wanted it to look like it could. These buttons were the closest I could go. And then I glued the pads back in, this time with the intent of them being secure. And I think that gives us a final bit boy. I don't think I forgot anything. If anything's confusing, please do email me at dianagenta at gmail.com or just leave a comment on the video and I'll get right back to you as quick as I can. Also, please let me know if you make one and if you can get a picture to me, I would love to see it. I'm really trying hard to get this out in time for cosplay for convention season. So I'll be very excited to see how you how you work out the more creative parts of, of this project. And it was super fun. I hope you guys like it. Y'all have fun out in the wasteland. Don't get killed.